Welcome to the Bio Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of the confocal imaging technique and its applications. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos in life sciences. Let's dive into the topic for today. Confocal microscopy is an optical imaging technique used to increase optical resolution and contrast of a micrograph by adding a spatial pin hole placed at the confocal plane of the lens to eliminate out-of-focus light. Confocal microscopy, most frequently confocal laser scanning microscopy CLSM, or laser confocal scanning microscopy LCSM, enables the reconstruction of three-dimensional structures from the obtained images. This technique has gained popularity in the scientific and industrial communities and typical applications are in life sciences, semiconductor inspection, and material science. Bioimaging is a non-invasive process of visualizing biological activity in a specific period. It does not inhibit the various life processes such as movement, respiration, etc., and it helps to report the 3D structure of specimens apart from inferencing physically. Bioimaging aims to interfere as little as possible with life processes. Moreover, it is often used to gain information on the 3D structure of the observed specimen from the outside, i.e. without physical interference. Let's start with a review of the basic concept behind the principle of confocal imaging. Confocal imaging was patented in 1957 by Marvin Minsky and aims to overcome some limitations of traditional wide-field fluorescence microscopes. In a conventional, which is wide-field, fluorescence microscope, the entire specimen is flooded evenly in light from a light source. All parts of the specimen in the optical path are excited at the same time, and the resulting fluorescence is detected by the microscope's photodetector or camera including a large unfocused background part. In contrast, a confocal microscope uses point illumination and a pinhole in an optically conjugate plane in front of the detector to eliminate out-of-focus signal henceforth the name confocal stems from this configuration. As only light produced by fluorescence very close to the focal plane can be detected, the image's optical resolution, particularly in the sample depth direction, is much better than that of wide-field microscopes. However, as much of the light from sample fluorescence is blocked at the pinhole, this increased resolution is at the cost of decreased signal intensity, so long exposures are often required. As only one point in the sample is illuminated at a time, 2D or 3D imaging requires scanning over a regular raster, i.e., a rectangular pattern of parallel scanning lines in the specimen. The achievable thickness of the focal plane is defined mostly by the wavelength of the used light divided by the numerical aperture of the objective lens, but also by the optical properties of the specimen. The thin optical sectioning capabilities makes these types of microscopes particularly good at 3D imaging and surface profiling of samples. Here is the breakdown of the CLSM components. First, we have the laser. Laser lines can be chosen via a selection device and are matched with the fluorophores used in your experiment. The second component is the beam splitter. This refers to the filter that separates the excitation from the emitted light in the fluorescence beam path of the microscope. Alongside that exists a scanner, which is a unit based on two or more mirrors, which guide the focused laser beam across the specimen pixel by pixel and line by line. Another component is the objective lens. These are the heart of the microscope and mainly determine the optical image formation and the resolution of the system. Besides that, we have the Z-control, which allows you to focus on any focal plane within your sample and the motorized Z-stepper allows movement in the axial direction in small step sizes larger than 10 nanometer with high precision. In addition, the pinhole is an adjustable iris in the intermediate image plane. It allows exclusion of most of the out-of-focus light from the acquired image and thus 
Provides optical sectioning capacity. It defines the thickness of the optical slice and is dependent on the properties of the objective lens. The pinhole size can be set via the software on your computer and the best trade-off between the efficiency of light collection and optical sectioning is if it is set to one area unit. Last but not least the component known as the photomultiplier tube refers to highly sensitive detectors that collect the photons emitted by your sample. They basically transform the light signal into an electrical one that is recorded by a computer. Similar to the wide field microscope, the confocal microscope uses fluorescence optics. Instead of illuminating the whole sample at once, laser light is focused onto a defined spot at a specific depth within the sample. This leads to the emission of fluorescent light at exactly this point. A pinhole inside the optical pathway cuts off signals that are out of focus, thus allowing only the fluorescent signals from the illuminated spot to enter the light detector. By scanning the specimen in a raster pattern, images of one single optical plane are created. 3D objects can be visualized by scanning several optical planes and stacking them using a suitable microscopy deconvolution software, ZStack. It is also possible to analyze multicolor immunofluorescent staining using state-of-the-art confocal microscopes that include several lasers and emission or excitation filters. This configuration, as only light produced by fluorescent, here is the breakdown, provides optical sectioning capacity. Similar to the There are many types of confocal microscopy available commercially. The most common ones are confocal laser scanning microscopes, spinning disc, also known as Nipkow disc, confocal microscopes. Confocal laser scanning microscopes use multiple mirrors, typically two or three scanning linearly along the X and the Y axis, to scan the laser across the sample and descan the image across a fixed pinhole and detector. Spinning disc, or Nipkow disc, confocal microscopes use a series of moving pinholes on a disc to scan spot of light. Since a series of pinholes scans an area in parallel each pinhole is allowed to hover over a specific area for a longer amount of time thereby reducing the excitation energy needed to illuminate a sample when compared to laser scanning microscopes. Decreased excitation energy reduces phototoxicity and photobleaching of a sample often making it the preferred system for imaging live cells or organisms. Within the spinning disc confocal microscopy, there is an improved microlens enhanced or dual spinning disc confocal microscopes work under the same principles as spinning disc confocal microscopes except a second spinning disc containing microlenses is placed before the spinning disc containing the pinholes. Every pinhole has an associated microlens. The microlenses act to capture a broad band of light and focus it into each pinhole significantly increasing the amount of light directed into each pinhole and reducing the amount of light blocked by the spinning disc. Programmable array microscopes, termed as PAM, use an electronically controlled spatial light modulator, termed as SLM, that produces a set of moving pinholes. The SLM is a device containing an array of pixels with some property, opacity, reflectivity or optical rotation of the individual pixels that can be adjusted electronically. The SLM contains microelectromechanical mirrors or liquid crystal components. The microscope's illumination tube lens and objective collect the light from pixels in the ON state and image the microdisplay onto the sample. Subsequently, the image is usually acquired by a charge-coupled device CCD, camera. In the recent years, bioimaging technologies are rapidly developing, with continued improvements in resolution capabilities, image analysis, and data management enabling new boundaries for scientific discovery. Biosensing and bioimaging facilitate the investigation of biological and pathological processes in living systems at the molecular level. 
Improvements in quantitative methods will further increase the potential that imaging can offer researchers, and the ability to integrate image data with other data types is likely to be another key area of development. Imaging equipment can also be bound up to software and require a significant amount of user training, presenting challenges for researchers unfamiliar with its operation. Given the large initial cost of having confocal systems, most universities or research institutions have a dedicated core facilities team to maintain the instruments and give instruction for use can give researchers access to and the confidence to use a wider range of equipment within the bioimaging research center.